Everything good? Yes. Hi everyone. Um, we're back again with another another episode of um the ATF walkthrough series for Washington DC, and today we'll be talking about um working with um, manual page inspector, and as usual, I have my co-host here, Amanda. Hello everyone. Nice to see you again. All right. Good. So um, this is our forward-looking statement. Um, and um, this is the agenda we'll, we'll be covering today. Today we'll be talking about introduction to page, inspe page inspector. We'll also talk about some key features within page inspector. We'll um, mention the testable page components and also the untestable page components. Then we'll get to the section where Amanda will do a demo of how to get around page inspector. Yes. So today, um, if you're familiar with ATF, you would know that there are some components within ATF that you can't um, typically test. And with the manual page, with the page inspector, this gives you the, the luxury to be able to um, comprehensively analyze and test each of the user interface. About of your and um, some key features you should be aware about is the first one being um, within the page inspector itself, the interface itself, you would find something called the highlighted frame for current page. So what this means is that it shows um, the boundary of what is currently being inspected within the page inspector. Then we also have another um, key feature called the inspector pane control. Um, within this um, pane control, you can use this to um, interact with the page itself. Um, we also have components, another component called the component identification button. So this is the tool that enables users to identify which specific components can be tested or is available for analysis. Then um, you also have a section of this of manual page inspector called the list of testable page components. And this gives a comprehensive list of the page components available for custom UI testing. Then um, the fourth key feature you should be aware about is the page component search filter and also the the detailed component um, information. So now we'll move on to the next thing to discuss, which is the testable page component. component. Two testable page components within the page inspector. The first one being the standard HTML components and the second one being the JavaScript components. As part of um, our testing, these components can be used um, for custom UI testing. Then we've got the untestable page components. If you are, um, used to um, ATF, you would know that there are some components that can be tested. So um, for this, we have two categories also. The first one being the exclusion listed page components. And um, examples of just a list from service catalog and workspaces. Um, these are not part of the custom UI testing because we have um, test tips that can be used to test um, all of these components. Um, the second one being the inaccessible page component. Now we're talking about um, third-party JavaScript libraries or element that has um, some bit of shadow DOM. So um, now that I've gone through the, the types of components that can be tested and not tested within manual page inspector, I would hand over to Amanda to take us through a demo. Yes. Um, so I will share my screen. And I do already have the manual page inspector open on the screen here, but in order for you to find it, there's two methods that you can do. And the first thing, if you type manual page inspector or ATF in my case, in the filter navigator, you will see this module here. Clicking this will take you directly to this page. Um, another way to do it, for example, let's say you're on a page or any type of page that you intend on testing. Let's say you want to directly open page inspector from there. You can click preferences, um, debugging, and then if you turn on this um, property here, this will open up page inspector in your instance on the current page you're on. Okay, but for that, I don't want it on this page since we have it manually open in here. I do want to select the different type of options that they have as far as what pages you can um, test in your instance. So we have UI pages here. And this one is directly connected to the UI pages table. So anything that appears in that table is what you would see here as far as options. Um, one thing to keep in mind with these UI pages, um, as far as when you test it in ATF, if it's something you would be able to find these UI pages either by navigating to it, maybe having a, a selection of steps that navigate you to this page, 
or you can find them from the filter navigator. Some of these options here, some of these modules will directly take you to a UI page. Um, we also have standard UI. Um, one thing about the standard UI, lots of the options that you see are lists and forms, and this does have its own category. So this is kind of one of those components that are not necessarily testable. Um, but if you do happen to have any components added to the to the form, it could be useful. Or for example, let me just click on a random record. Um, one second here. And expect, um, even though some of these are not testable because they have their own category, this will be pretty helpful in helping you figure out what types of things to test. Um, so for example, let's say you don't really know, you're not familiar with the categories and you're not sure what to use. This will give you a reminder that don't use the custom UI step for this, use the form category step instead. Okay. And then the last option that we have, let me go back to standard UI, or the next option we have service portal. Um, this one's pretty self-explanatory. You're able to select any portal that appears um, in that portal module. And then you're also able to select a specific page as well. One thing about these portals, if you are not sure what the page is, a nice trick that you can do is actually take a look at the ID and the URL. And same for any of the pages, the UI pages, lots of the times the name is actually in the URL and this will help you um, identify which ones to select in the manual page inspector and in ATF as well. Um, and then the last option we have here is custom. Custom works for any of these scenarios. Um, it allows you to paste the URL um, directly into here. Um, so let's say, for example, you're not sure, you can't find something in UI pages or the standard UI or in service portal, you can directly paste the entire URL in there. Um, so for example, let's see. Um, let me just navigate away from this, for example. So let's say I want to test this success dashboard here, and that opens up to this page that we see. You are able to copy the URL. I'm just going to copy everything up to home paste that in there, and then it will open up for you to inspect. Let me take that off here. Um, so those are the different types of ways. And then like I mentioned, the custom, that'll work for any type, whether that be a service portal page or UI page. Um, directly typing in that URL will get you there. Um, so once you actually get into Page Inspector, I'm going to take this off here as well. Um, you have a couple of different options that you see which is this target here. This allows you to drag it onto any of the components for you to see if it's testable or not. Um, and then we have the page components. This will just be a long list of the components that it's recognizing. So anything that appears here means something is testable within ATF. Let me drag on to some of these components. Um, like we mentioned, there are some limitations to ATF. So for example, UI Builder, yes, they're making more um, updates to that. In, this, in the future soon, we'll be able to test more components. Um, but right now, if you are trying to test things in UI Builder or workspaces, either use the category for that, or it can recognize at least some of the text fields and the button fields. Um, so those are some workarounds for how you may be able to achieve some of your goals, um, even if a component is not testable currently. Um, so I will click on one of these buttons, for example. Uh, and you'll see that not only are you able to see information about what the button, how it appears in Page Inspector, you can see that information, but you can also test some actions as well. And these actions are the actions that are available within ATF when you're creating your test. Um, so you'll see in ATF for the custom UIs, you're able to click on any of the buttons, you're able to um, test for checking the value of the buttons, and you're also able to check um, visibility. So if it's disabled, for example, then that means obviously the button's not appearing on the page if it isn't, um, and so on. So let's say I want to click on this component. You're actually testing the ATF test step before you put it in your test. Um, so you're able to see exactly what would happen if you were to um, replicate this within ATF. So I'm going to switch over to my ATF test so that we can see how you can use Page Inspector um, and incorporate that into ATF tests. 
So right now, so far, the only thing I did was impersonate a user and then navigate to a module. And I've navigated to that same exact success dashboard that we see here. So for this test, what I'm going to be doing is just confirming that we're able to not only see the dashboard, but also click on these time frames. So see quarterly, monthly, and yearly. Um, so the next step, um, and then keep in mind for this one, what I used to navigate to the success dashboard was this navigate to module step. If you wanted to do something like a portal UI component, if that's what you wanted to test, you would use, let me see, you would use this custom UI category, and then you can see there's an open to portal page um, property here. And then, like I mentioned, there's some things that will help you on how to navigate to the correct page. You can see that information in the URL. Um, so I can click in this example, Employee Center. Again, the page is in the URL, so we have ticket. And then these parameters here, this will help you get directly to this page. And the parameters are also in the URL. So you see this and sign here, that means the next parameter is table. So that would allow you to go into here, put table, and then you'll see in the URL table equals, and then there's the value. So you can post incident. You can also add multiple parameters as well, because in this case, there are two parameters in this. Um, so the next one would be sys ID. Sys ID, and then you have the number pasted here. So this would help you directly navigate to a specific page. Um, if you don't have those parameters set properly, you might end up navigating to the wrong page. For example, if I were to just click ticket, um, that would probably navigate me to an, uh, a blank page, and then that could lead to test failures, for example. Um, so you want to make sure you have that entire path written into the test. Um, but back to the actual example, we're doing um, a page in the classic UI and not on a portal. So we'll be using the navigate to the module test. And then the next step, once we do that, it will take us just to that home page that we see here. Um, so the next step would be clicking on those UI actions. Um, so you, again, you want to go to custom UI. And then like I mentioned earlier, we have those three actions. Um, so setting the component values, um, validating the components are visible on the page and then clicking on um, those components. We do have some other ones as well, as far as asserting text on the page. This is because some of the UI components, they might not be clickable. So the only workaround that you're able to do is see if it's visible, if any text is visible on the page. And this will help you to validate your functionality if you're not able to click on a specific button. Okay. So I will click the custom UI. And what will actually happen when you click that component is it will run your test and then pause on the on each UI based step. It will pause so that it can capture all of those page components. Um, so you can retrieve components here. And then we'll watch it execute. And then it will stop. Let's see, yep. taking a snapshot of the current image and that's it grabbing those components. Um, if you need to redo it, for example, you can re-retrieve the components again, but we'll just continue on to uh, the next field. And then you will see all of the options that we pretty much saw. Let me see, um, I don't have it open on here, but everything that we saw on Page Inspector, you will see all of those options appear here as well. And the button that we are looking for will be this all service groups button. Uh, not all service groups, sorry, the yearly button. Uh, so you can type, you can do a quick search for year. Let me see. Year, is it able to component that one? Let's see where it is. Yep, we're on monthly. Okay, so it's on monthly by default, not yearly. So we can do that. So um, then when you click submit, um, what I do for every time I'm building a test, I always run it to make sure that I um had the intended functionality executed. Um, so I will run that test here. And then once the page calms down, it should click on that custom UI um, component that I had and then open that up. 
Um, so the next step, the first part of this test was simply opening up this list. Um, and the next step will be clicking on another option for us to see the homepage change. And because of that, um, as you can see, when I clicked on that button, more UI components um, are now visible. So now we need to add another click on a custom UI component. And we'll need to retrieve the components again because now there are additional options. Um, and we, in the, if we don't retrieve this, redo that, um, we won't see those new updates. Um, so it'll run through that here. It's going to capture all of the components on this first page. Then it will click the button so that it can capture these new components that are now displayed. Okay, so then we'll click yeah, next, and now the yearly option will be available. So when I first typed it in, it wasn't available, and now it's here. Um, since we recaptured that, you can click Submit here, and then execute the test again, just to make sure that everything um, is now refreshing properly. One second, executing the server side steps. Let's see if I have two open. Yep, I had two open. <laughs> okay, so it will click that button and then now it's going to click the second UI component as well. And then refreshing this page. So the last step is the actual validation part. We have to test or we have to add a validation um, step so that we can confirm that the changes were actually made. Um, so in here, how I'm going to validate this, whenever you do click any of these components, you'll see that the title changes. Um, so I'm actually going to do a text validation for this yearly and make sure it says overview of 2024. Um, so let me close out both of these client test runners. All right, add a test step. And then you can see the assert text on page for the custom UI. We're going to assert for the overview of 2024 and then make sure the assert type is selected to what you intend. So we want to verify the text is on the page. You also have the option to verify if text is not on the page. Okay. So then I will run that test one last time. But that is pretty much the steps in this more um, simple example, the steps on how you can use the manual page inspector and incorporate that into your ATF tests. Okay, so clicking through those buttons and then the last step will be validating that this is present on the screen. Okay, nice. And then we do have a series about how to review your results and, and et cetera, but you're able to review that as well by clicking this button. All right. So that was all for the demo.